All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1994 Subaru SVX. Up front is a 3.3 liter flat six and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. This video is sponsored by carmarshall.com. If you'd like to support the channel, click the link down in the description below. Carmarshall.com advertises for over 100,000 vehicles across the US. But let's get back to that 3.3 liter flat six. Now, most Subarus have flat four engines. That's nothing really too crazy, but a flat six is interesting. They added two more cylinders essentially to an EJ. And I have to say, it's very, very interesting to drive. It has a lot of torque, it has a lot of power, it has a good amount of power and torque, but it's not turbo. So it's very, very linear, very, very smooth. It's a very smooth flat six, and I like that a lot. It's a really, really pleasurable driving experience. And it is very snowy, it's very wet outside, so I won't really get to be able to do a full, full, tried and true grippy boy pull, but it's quick. It makes about 230 horsepower at the crank, you know, do whatever math equation you want to all four wheels, but it is not sluggish in the slightest. Yeah! Now, like I said, paired to it is a four-speed automatic transmission. It's the only transmission that was offered here in the SVX. So there was no manual option. Some people say it's because there wasn't a manual that could hold up to this much torque. Maybe. I think the true reason there wasn't a manual offered is because this was a luxury coupe. That's what they were sort of going for when they designed this car. And we'll talk more about that later because this was not priced to the everyday man. But it does come with a four-speed auto and the nice thing about that is it's a four EAT transmission for eat it's just a transmission code given to it but that means that it is the same automatic transmission you'll find in a similar year legacy outback things like that so if you do blow up a transmission which is a common issue for these cars a very common SVX issue is trans issues don't fret because although they only made 15,000 SVXs they made tons and tons of these transmissions, so don't even worry about it. Last but not least, of course, the SVX is all-wheel drive. That's one of Subaru's other kind of call signs is the fact that they put all-wheel drive in most of their vehicles. And I'll explain why this is sort of an interesting thing because this is a luxury coupe, but again, we'll talk about that at the end of the video. So let's talk about the interior. We have plenty of quirks to go through there. So in front of me, I have a bunch of analog gauges, nothing really too crazy here. On the left, I have a diagram of the car, which looks nothing like the actual car. My coolant temperature tachometer, and then on the right, I have my speedometer, another top side view of the car, and then my fuel, things like that. It's very, very 90s standard gauges. Nothing really to report from there. But down below the gauges, I do have cruise control, fog lights, security, rear defrost, and my hazard switches, which is really, really interesting. And I am driving up a snowy hill right now. This is, it's beautiful right now. This is a beautiful scene. But getting back to it, the steering wheel is very large and pillowy because it's from the 90s, and of course it is. I do have two little horn buttons on either side I'll wait for this car to pass and then <laughs> to the left of me i have my power mirror adjusters parking lights and my mirror defrosters very very interesting this this car was loaded loaded with features and i absolutely love it getting to the door i do have power lock and my four window switches because i do actually have rear windows we'll talk about that with the exterior of the car the door card as a whole is awesome it's very plush it's very very nice i like it a lot it, it's one of the best looking door cards i've seen in a very very long time and it feels very japanese this whole interior feels very japanese i've driven a lot of japanese domestic market vehicles that are right hand drive and were only sold and made for the japanese people and never sold here jdm cars always have a certain feel and smell to them and the svx has that it has that sort of plush, really nice features that you would find in Japanese domestic vehicles, but this is a USDM vehicle. This was never sold in Japan. It was sent here to the US. Now they did sell SVXs in Japan, but what I'm saying is this specific vehicle, Tyler's SVX, this one was sold directly to America. But getting on with the interior, in the center I do have a little digital clock, a vent 
my climate controls, which is very nice. The temperature is controlled by a little screen. You just hit the, the red arrow for hotter and the blue arrow for cooler. And then to the right of that, I have a bunch of different buttons. We have off, auto, economy, defrost, recirculate, and then my fan controls, everything like that. But then the radio actually does hide away. I like it a lot. It's just, it, it's so clean and simple. And even getting down to the shifter, Again, clean, simple, it looks great. This is the automatic shifter. To the left of it, I do have lock and unlock. I, I, I just think it all works really, really well together and I like it a lot. I just think overall, it looks great. And the weirdest thing about the center console, at least in my own personal opinion, is the handbrake slash parking brake. It's a big handle you pull up. It looks like they took an automatic shift knob, flipped it around and put it in the center. It's very, very odd. I don't think I've ever seen a car with something quite like this. Now, the seats are leather. This was part of the LSI package. This is a higher trim SVX. Got a little bit more of the bells and whistles. And so the leather seats were part of that. I like them. They're very, very comfortable. It's a very relaxed sort of driving position. And again, when we talk about the luxury coupe, we'll talk about that. But it's great. Absolutely love it. We do have back seats, so we will do a back seat review as well. So here on the channel, I'm not very fond of uh, coupes that have back seats. So let's see how hard it is to get into the back of an SVX. All right, so there's a lever here. Ooh, see, this is what always gets me is the seat belt. I guess I'm gonna go, can I slide this up at all? Here we go. Ow, ow, ow. We're doing it, we're doing it. Oh, there's no hope in me closing that door. Ugh. Well, yeah, these pretty much suck. Um, I have window switches for the rear windows and then like a little ashtray right here. My head hits the ceiling. The seats themselves are very comfortable, very plush. If I had more headroom and legroom, I'd be very comfortable, but I don't, so I'm not. Now we have to talk about the looks. The car looks really, really cool. It sort of looks like an Eagle Talon. I'm sorry if that offends you, uh, but it, it, I think it looks so cool and it looks so unique and it's just overall, it's just such an interesting thing to look at. Driving it, this has been an amazing experience for sure, but just looking at them is an experience all its own. I think these vehicles look great, and that's actually what the name is from, it's Subaru Vehicle X. <sighs> but they look amazing, and so let's talk about my favorite feature, which is the split windows. So. The person who designed this vehicle also designed the DeLorean, had split windows. The theory behind this is that you can open up your window when it is raining outside and you won't get wet. In theory, this is brilliant. This is a great idea. So then you can be cruising and you can have fresh air coming into the cabin without getting drenched, in theory. And so right now it's lightly snowing and I'm staying dry and getting fresh air and it's great, but it, it doesn't work all the time. It, it's, not, it's not the best. And so, as you can see, this is how far the windows open, but I kind of like it. It, it. It's just something so weird and quirky and you don't see it on cars ever. This is the first car I've ever driven with you know, a split roll down window. And the rears go down too. Not all the way, but they go down. It's just, it, it's such a cool car. It's such a cool experience. And so let's talk about it. This was a luxury coupe. It was priced in 1994. The owner actually has the original sticker for the window, half of it, well, a chunk of it. This particular car was sold from the dealer for $35,000. Now I'll put the inflation price here for 2020 down at the bottom of the screen. That's a lot of money. This was not a cheap car. This was not priced so anyone could walk in and buy one. This was a luxury coupe and you got all the features. Subaru put a lot of money into this car to develop that 3.3 liter flat six. That was made for this car. It was used in others, but made for this. Mirror defrosters were not common at all in 1994. The split window, the design, I mean, you can't pull these windows from a Subaru Legacy. You can't pull these windows from an Impreza. This was all custom. This was all one-off. This was all different. And so, unfortunately, it nearly bankrupted Subaru, but it led to a high, high price. 
a price that not everyone wanted to pay. And so it ended up, they only really made about 15,000 of them from what I've read and heard. I saw a number as high as 24,000, which includes the Europe and, and JDM models. They did not make a lot of these, which is sad because these are so cool and unique. And that's the other thing I wanted to talk about was the all wheel drive. What luxury coupe back in the day was all wheel drive? Not many, if any. The car that immediately comes to mind is the Unos Cosmo, which was a JDM car that came with a three rotor, 20B rotary engine. That was rear wheel drive. And that didn't have split windows. And so in closing, this car flopped. This car flopped big time. No one really bought it. They didn't make that many. From what the owner told me in 1994, they only made 1,500 of them around that number, for sure under 2,000. But this is something so cool, so unique. I love driving it. It's a very, very comfortable daily. I'm sitting here behind this flat six in the snow. It's horrible driving conditions out here. Honestly, I have to get back into my daily driver, my Pontiac, and I'm kind of scared to drive it <laughs> in weather like this. But this, I'm not scared at all. I'm going the speed limit. I'm making turns. It's totally fine. This is a, an awesome daily driver. I think it just was born in the wrong era for the wrong amount of money. It's a little bit like Clyde Drexler. Great basketball player, born in the Jordan era, wasn't given time to shine. And I don't think the SVX was really given its proper time to shine. But that being said, it has formed a cult following. If you get an SVX, if you get into the SVX community, they welcome you with open arms. From what it sounds like, it's very similar to the rotary community. People help each other out. They just wanna keep these cars on the road. And that's exactly what the owner Tyler has done, which thank you so much, Tyler, for letting me take out your SVX. This thing is so cool. It, it's so cool and it's so ahead of its time and financially was it a sore spot for Subaru? Absolutely. Was it a dumb financial decision? Of course. Was there a need for this? No. But oftentimes your best memories are the ones that come from the stupidest ideas. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Again, huge thank you to Tyler for letting me take out this SVX. I mean, this is just such a cool piece of not only automotive history, but just Subaru's history. And it gives me a good idea of what Subaru was doing at the time, which is nonsense, really. But again, huge thank you to him. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. Aside, yeah.